Hello, this is the uh, actually fourth in a set of recordings uh, related to the notes for experiments with one factor. And this part is in uh, actually the second part of those notes. Okay, so again, I'm just going to go ahead and go into sl slideshow mode and select the pointer. So this is a follow-on to the previous set of notes I did on replication and subsampling. And I indicated that in most software, when you have replication and subsampling, again, replication is simply having replicate experimental units. And subsampling is when you take multiple measurements on each of those experimental units. <coughs> we have to actually tell the software how to analyze the data because it, because it has to be able to uh, separate the experimental error, the noise caused by differences in the experimental units, from the sampling or observational error. That is noise caused by the multiple measurements on each experimental unit. And we're using the electroplating example where we're looking at potential differences in three different processes that electroplate metal parts. And there are three processes, and the response is the overall thickness of the plating. For each process, there are six replicate coupons. Okay, and those represent replication for each of the levels of process. And then on each coupon, there are three observations or subsamples. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to set up the analysis in JUMP. So I'm going to go ahead and just work directly with JUMP to do this. Okay. So this is the data set, the electroplate data set. We only actually need the column uh, process, coupon, and thickness. Since I have multiple terms that would go in the model, I have to use the fit model platform. That is, I want to fit a model with more than one term. So in fit model, in the launch dialog, the response is thickness. That's y. Okay. Process represents the potential fixed effects between the different processes, do they permanently change the mean thickness? Okay. Coupons represent the experimental error or replication. Since there are six coupons for each process, we want to measure the random variation among coupons within each of the processes, and then we'll pool uh, the variance, the sample variances together from the three processes to get one overall measure. So we have to tell JUMP that the coupons are nested within process. So JUMP now will know, once I click on the nest button, that differences in coupons should only be measured within each process. But we need to go further. Remember, we discussed the idea of fixed effects and random effects. Random effects are factors in experiments that don't permanently change the overall level of the response. They just add noise to it. And we mentioned in the electroplating example that the random variation among the coupons is just that. It's a random effect. It adds more noise to thickness but it doesn't have any permanent effect on the overall process performance. And since it's a random effect, that is, we want to measure the variance caused by the replicate coupons with coupon within process highlighted. Under the attributes button, we select random effect. Okay. So <clears throat> at this point, Jump now knows that we have a mixed model. And we're going to leave the default options and click on the Run button. Okay, And I'll show you the key output. First of all, you'll see this variance component estimates table. 
this is a key. So what it's telling us, the variation, in fact, let me do that again, between the replicate coupons is almost zero. In other words, on average, for the six coupons within each process, there's almost no variation. In other words, there's very little noise. The coupons uh, appear to be, on average, more or less the same for each process. But notice residual. Jump's giving us this thing called residual variation. That's the subsampling error. Okay, why it? That's the variation within a coupon. It's the measure of the homogeneity of the coding on each coupon. And notice to the right is kind of a key. It's telling us almost 99% of the random variation is due to a lack of uniformity within the coupons. So if we were redesigning this experiment, we most likely would cut back on the number of replicate coupons because there's very little difference between them for each process. And we'd probably take more measurements on each coupon because there seems to be a lot of variation in thickness or lack of homogeneity in each coupon. And again, that would be of real interest to an engineer in this case. And then finally, you're given what's called the fixed effect analysis. And this determines, is there a fixed effect of process? And in point of fact, it shows us that there are real differences between the coupons. Notice there's a high F ratio and a very small P value. So at least two of these processes appear to differ in average coding thickness. Okay. And that's basically how easy it is to do um, an analysis in JUMP when you have fixed effects, you can have more than one, and random effects. So if you set the fit model dialog window up correctly, it will give you all the analysis you need to understand experimental error or replication error and sampling error or observational error and then whether or not there is actually a fixed effect. Okay, now notice that when we <coughs> um, do the analysis, we are given what jump, an extra analysis jump calls effect details. And in this analysis, what we're interested in doing is maybe making comparisons between the processes to see which might be different. So if I click on the little uh, down arrow for process, okay, there's something called contrast. And I'll explain more about this in a moment. A contrast is basically nothing but measuring the statistical difference between the different treatments. So in this case, let's measure a contrast between process A and process C. By the way, this is nothing more than a two-sample t-test for a difference between those two different treatments. Okay. So I'm going to do the contrast, and then we get what's called the test detail. And what it does, it does a two-sample t-test. It just measures the significant difference between the two. And this is a t-test. Notice the very small p-value. It says, yes, there is a very significant difference between uh, process A and process C in terms of the actual plating thickness. If we do a plot you can see that A is much smaller than C, and that is a significant difference. Okay, so that's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the notes, and in the notes it talks through um, the least squares means, and, um, and I introduced the idea of contrast. I'm coming back to that in a moment. 
But I also wanted to briefly talk about what we call unbalanced designs. That is, there is not the same number of observations for each level of the experimental factor. More often than not, this has happened by chance. Usually you design experiments to be balanced, but sometimes you lose observations. So this could happen where there's uh, unequal replication, but an equal amount of observations on each EU. We could have equal amounts of replication, but unequal observations, and we can have both. This used to be somewhat of a tricky problem in statistics because our variance components analysis and our f-test for the fixed effect are actually impacted by the imbalance. But modern software like Jump is quite intelligent. It detects the imbalance and makes adjustments in all the tests so that they are correct. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead to slide 31 and show a case study. So this is an experiment being done by turf scientists. And they are looking at four types of root growth stimulants. In other words, stimulate uh, better uh, growth and more robust grass. So for each of the four stimu stimulants, there are eight plots as a lichus they can possibly select them. These are the experimental units or replicates. Okay. Then from each of the eight plots, they're going to pull two plugs and then take those plugs back to the lab and measure root growth in terms of dry uh, root weight. The plugs are subsamples. So the plots are the replicates for each root growth uh, stimulant and the plugs within each plot are the subsamples. Okay. So in the next table, we see the results. And we see that the number of replicates are not the same. Uh, and this happened because some of the plots were lost due to uh, disease and potentially really bad golfers driving all over the experimental plots. Things like that happen in reality. So let's do an analysis in jump. So I'm just going to go ahead back to jump. The analysis, by the way, um, is exactly as we did for electroplating. As I said, jump knows how to deal with the lack of balance and do the correct analysis. Let's go to analyze, fit model. Okay. Stimulator is the fixed effect. We want to see if there's a fixed difference in root growth between the stimulators. The plots, and the plots are nested within each stimulator. Okay. So there are eight unique plots for each stimulator. And differences between the plots are a random effect. And then our response is root weight. Okay. So if we go forward, we run the analysis. Once again, we get our variance components analysis. We can see the differences between the, the replicate plots is not very large. But once again, the variation among the plugs within each plot is large. And once again, it's almost 99% of the noise in the measurements is due to the lack of homogeneity within the plots. And that for people who work in, uh, say, in agriculture, this is not surprising. Often within plots, even though they try to make them homogeneous, there is often a lot of variation. Okay. And we get our fixed effect measure. And it shows, indeed, that there are significant differences among the plots. Now notice we do get the uh, effect details. By the way, I'm going to deselect under the main menu, row diagnostics, the leverage plots. They're actually not very useful to us. Okay. And you see the stimulator. You see the least squares means, the standard errors. 
Notice the standard errors for each mean are not the same because the number of measurements is not the same for each treatment. So B had the least amount of measurements, so it's the least precisely measured. It has the largest standard error. And of course, if we right click in the report uh, table, if we want, we can generate confidence intervals okay, for each of the means. And I showed you the idea of the contrast earlier. I just wanted to quickly explain the terminology. In statistics, we often call the predicted average for each treatment level is often called a least squares means. Just think of it as the predicted average. In the cases, in most cases, the least squares mean is nothing more than the same okay, as the overall average for each cell or each treatment. Okay. And if we want to see if there are possibly differences between the treatments, we can do a series of what we call contrasts. I'm going to show how to do them, and these contrasts are described in the part two notes, so I will ask you to read through the details. So under the stimulator, I'm going to show the least squares means plot, and then the contrast. Okay. Again, a contrast is nothing more than a difference between treatments. Think of it as a weighted average where the weights sum to zero, i.e., it's a difference. So in this case, I want to measure the difference between, let's say, um, stimulator A versus stimulator D. So I click plus one for A, minus one for D. And that's my contrast. Notice the weights are one and minus one. They sum to zero. But I'd like to do some more comparisons. So if I click on new column, okay, I'm going to take the difference between stimulator B and stimulator D. This is another contrast. And notice again the weights sum to zero, one and minus one. Okay. And then I'm going to do one more. I'm going to compare stimulator C to D. And by the way, there are many other types of contrast you could do here. And I'm going to talk about these in, uh, later on in the course in another section. But I'm going to do these three contrasts. So I'm going to click Done and look at the test details. And <clears throat> similar to what you saw with the electroplating data, what we've done are three different two sample t-tests. And then Jump calculates the p-value for each test. So notice A and D appear to be different. Okay. B and C are borderline. The p-value is larger, so maybe B and C are not different. And then when we compare C and D, they're different. Again, this is nothing more than doing three different two-sample t-tests to see what differences might exist among the plots. So where we didn't see a difference, again, was B and D. The other two appear to be different. So that's what we mean by least squares means. They're just the predicted average differences um, for the different treatment levels. And the contrasts are nothing but comparisons between the different treatment levels. Uh, in this case, these are simple contrasts. They amount to nothing but two sample t-tests. Okay. And again, this is all discussed in the notes. I'll let you read through them for the details, but I've basically gone through and shown you how to do them. Okay, And we'll discard the differences. And that ends the series of videos related to uh, experiments with one factor.